Hi, this is Nat, and this is your video lesson on creating line graphs uh, specifically to show change over time. That's going to be kind of the first thing we talk about. When do I use a line graph? Well, we use a line graph just like we said when we have a single piece of data that is changing over time. And we want to be able to track that change. One example might be something like your height. Your height changes constantly through the beginning of your life, and, you know, we could put that on a graph and see how your height has changed over time. But the big idea is that we have a single piece of data at lots of points in time, and that's what goes on a line graph, really nothing else. When you set up a line graph, it's going to be pretty similar to setting up a bar graph, except that you're actually going to put two scales on it. The y-axis, or your vertical scale, is going to be the actual data that you're trying to track. And the x-axis, or your horizontal scale, is always going to be some sort of measurement of time. Now that could be seconds, weeks, months, years, decades, whatever actually makes sense. Um, but we always put the measurement of time on the x-axis, the horizontal axis. So let's take an example. Again, we'll use the idea of height, because height's an easy thing to see on a line graph. Let's say that uh, you're going to put height in inches on your y-axis. And you've got data for different months as you, you know, have gone through the year. When setting up my y-axis or height scale, I have to remember all the things that I remembered when I was making a bar graph. I have to decide what I'm going to space it by. I have to be consistent with that. I have to decide what I'm going to be counting by. I need to be consistent with that. So knowing your data in advance is really important. Let's say in this case I know that my data runs from 58 inches to 71 inches. I know that for my height, my origin or my corner down here is always going to be zero. That doesn't change. And I can now make the decision, do I want to use a scale break? Do I want to uh, count consistently from zero all the way? Remember, if you doubt whether or not you should put a scale break in, definitely just don't do it. In this case, I actually am going to put a scale break in because I'm going to jump all the way from zero to 58, and then I'm going to count by twos, I think. So here we go, scale break. And then I'm going to put in some consistent spaces. And I'm just going to count by ones because I'm not sure, or space by ones, because I'm not sure if I'll make it otherwise. And I might say start at 56, 58, 60, 62. Again, counting really consistently by twos here. Always have to count consistently. And that ends up being just about right for me. Now it's time to put in your time scale. In this case, I already know I'm going to uh, put my time in in months. When you do your time scale, it has a couple little differences from your um, y-axis scale. One is that you're not going to use a scale break. There's never a time when you'll use one because most time-oriented things just start, uh, you know, at the beginning here. So if I'm going to start with, say, January, I can actually put a dash right here on the axis and say this is going to be January. Something that does remain constant is I need to count consistently. If I'm going to count by months, I can't say, well, I have January for data. I don't have it for February, so I'll just skip February. Um, I have to put February in even if I don't have that data. And I have to skip consistently. So if I'm doing February, March... April, so on. I could also choose to skip a month in between. So like this, for example, I could uh, space by two, skip a month in between. January, March, skip April, go straight to May. Like this. So long as the way I count is consistent and the spacing is consistent, again, it's all fine. So that might be how I set this up. So just to review, when we set up the y-axis, same rules apply as always. 
You need to make a consistent scale. You need to count consistently. You need to space consistently. Same thing for the x-axis. You need to count consistently. You need to space consistently. Those are always the same. You might choose to put a scale break in on the y-axis, but you'll never need one for the x-axis. You can just begin counting wherever you want. From there, we mark dots where every point of data is. So if in January this person was 58 inches, I'm going to put a dot at 58 inches. If later on in February they were 60, I'll put a dot at 60. Maybe I don't have data for March, that's okay, I can skip it and go straight to April. And maybe they were 62 inches in April, and then so on. So this might be my completed dot arrangement. And you're going to notice in a couple places I am missing some data. So for example, I don't have data in here for March. That's okay. I still have to include March on my scale. Same deal here for July. Missing that data for July, but you'll notice I've still got July included. Um, the October data is also missing, but there's still a space for October. So even when I don't have data for a certain chunk of time, I still have to count consistently. The very last step in a good line graph is to connect those dots with straight lines. Not worrying about situations where I don't have data, just going right on through. And I always connect them left to right. Some students just jump to the closest dot, and what you'll end up with occasionally is a graph that jumps back and forth, which this is time passing, so that doesn't really make sense. Let's do one more fast example. Let's say that this is going to be a graph of how my bank account balance has changed over the years, and I've got my data here on the right. So it looks like the first thing to put in is how much money I have. And I'm going to have to create a scale for that money. Um, again, zero is always at the corner. I need to decide what I'm going to count by. And it looks like I got pretty low numbers and pretty high numbers. So for me, I think I'm going to count by 50s, maybe skipping two spaces each time. We'll see how that goes. So I'm going to put in my spaces. Again, equal consistent spacing. And then 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and then 350 would be up here at the top. I know I have some pretty high numbers. Um, might be worth redoing that scale, but since I think I got 350 to fit, I'm all right. Um, I didn't choose to put a scale break in, you're going to notice, because even though I have to jump to 48 as my first number, I'm counting by 50s, so jumping to 48 and counting by 50s doesn't make any sense. So I counted consistently from the very beginning. Next step is to put in my year scales, and I go from 2004 to 2012. Pretty straightforward. I think I'm just going to count by single. Uh, maybe I'll skip, actually, 2004, and I'll go by twos. Skip two, count by two. 2006, 2008. 2010, 2012, 2014, not necessary at all, that's okay. And I'll want to label that scale as years. Now it's time to put in my dots. So 2004, I see that I had $85 in my bank account. I'm going to say that that's maybe right about there. I'm not going to be able to get it perfect because I don't have a scale that's that precise. So we're just doing the best we can to get it as close to correct as we can. We can see in 2005, it was just a hair under 50. Let's see, in 2007, which is, we're skipping 2006. 2007, we've got 120, which is probably going to end up right about here. Then 2008, we've got 302, apparently it was a good year. That's just barely over 300. And then 2009, we've got 350 way up at the top here. Whoop, barely fit this in. And then we've got 257, kind of dropped some here, and that was in 2011. So we skipped a year to 257. Um, and then lastly, 2012, that's back up again, 312, maybe right there. Okay, again, very last step is going to be to connect all those dots up. 
always moving left to right. So you may see dots closer, but it's important to hit them all in order. Um, I'm not doing a great job with straight lines, but straight lines would be an improvement. And there we go. If I titled this graph, it'd be okay. Again, big things to remember. Consistent scale. Consistent scale. You're going to notice all my scales are very consistent. Consistent spacing, consistent counting. So here's some practice problems for you. Um, you've got two sets of data. The first is participants in the chess club by year, and then the second is the height of a plant in days. I'd like you to make a line graph for each one. Pay particularly close attention to your scales. Make sure that they're accurate and consistent on both axes. Good luck.